from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of the daily televised Mass. My name is Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Victoria, British Columbia, in thanksgiving for their personal intention. The second is an anonymous donor from Guelph, Ontario, for the repose of the souls of her husband and all the deceased and family members and for the return of her children and grandchildren to their faith. The third is Rocco Muscari from Kanata, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of Teresa Davis and his parents, Carmela and Angelo Muscari. May their souls rest in peace. Our thanks go out to the donors of this Mass. Today we celebrate the delightful feast of Saint Marguerite Bourgeois, one of our own. Even though she was born in France, she came here and started the congregation of Notre Dame, taking care of children, and especially those of native children, as she found them in Quebec and later on in Montreal. And as we begin this Eucharist, we ask this delightful saint, Saint Marguerite, to intercede for us before the Lord. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty God, who called Saint Marguerite Bourgeois to leave her homeland so as to educate the young people in the Christian life, direct our words and our deeds that along the varied paths which lead to you, we too, by her example and prayer, may proclaim the loving presence of our Savior. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Samuel. All the elders of Israel gather together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in our ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and, your, and appoint them to his chariots and to his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys 
and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks, and you shall be his slaves. And in that day, you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourself. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, listen to their voice and set a king over them. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according, according to Mark. Glory to the Lord. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a man who was paralyzed, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man who was paralyzed, Son, 
your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their heart, why does this fellow speak in such a way? It is a blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier, to say to the one who is paralyzed, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk? But that's so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up, take up mat, take your mat and go home. The man stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. During this liturgical season, we will be reading from the Gospel according to Mark. It's just a short Gospel, seven, 16 chapters in all. You can read it in the time it takes to watch The Young and the Restless, or All the Days of My Life, or Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. And if you do that once a week, you can cover St. Mark's Gospel each week. Imagine, you can be a scholar in that. And you'll notice two things in this Gospel of St. Mark. It's very short, it's very brief, it's almost telegraphic. And Mark will show, introduce Jesus in just one verse in the very first chapter. The other Gospels say a couple of chapters to introduce Jesus, to introduce his mission, to tell us what he is all about. In the very first chapter of Mark's Gospel, verse 14, we read, Jesus went to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come. Repent and believe the good news. And that was the mission of Jesus. And you will see that taken over the 16 chapters in Mark's Gospel. And there's one thing you will notice is that he's often persecuted, he's often contradicted, he's often opposed. That is on the part of those who did not accept the kingdom of God. But his disciples and apostles, he had problems with them because they constantly kept misunderstanding. And Jesus would constantly scold them saying, you have eyes but cannot see, you have ears but cannot hear, and you're dull of heart and mind. If you can't understand this, what else can I tell you? Now, if you have that in the background, then we can go to our gospel today, the healing of the paralytic man. And it is so relevant to us today. So many pastors and churches, priests and churches say, they are not people, people are not coming to church anymore. And parents and grandparents beat their breasts saying, I do not know what's, what I've done wrong with my children and grandchildren. They don't come to church, they don't have their babies baptized, they live common law, they do not take advantage of the sacraments. Don't hit the panic button. Because our gospel today, the paralyzed man, seems to be a proper metaphor for all that is happening within our church and it is quite common because we are so human. If you take a look at uh, our, the way we live our lives, when it comes to our physical fitness, we will see us in the gyms. I see people jogging even in the middle of this cold winter. I see people going for yoga. But when it comes to our spiritual life, we hope that it will take care of its play, take care of itself. This evening, I'm going to start a retreat for men. And these are the people who, like the men who carried the paralyzed man, are concerned about their faith. When I asked one of them, why do you come? He says, well, God has been good to me. I have a wonderful wife. I have wonderful children. I got a good job. I can go for a holiday every year. I need to take some time to be grateful to God. Another man said, I've been an alcoholic for all my life and I've been sober now for 15 years, but every year I need to come here to take stock of my life. 
to look at all the people that I've harmed because of my drinking and to see whether I can make amends to them, provided it does not embarrass them or create more problems with them. A third one will come and say, I need to re kindle, uh, charge the batteries of my spiritual life. Every year I will come here. And some of them have been coming for 30 and 40 years, year after year. And I recommend them to your prayers. These are the people who are like the man who carried the paralyzed man to the Lord. You and I are constantly called to do that. If you look at the paralyzed man, he didn't say a word, he didn't ask for help, he didn't ask for forgiveness, he didn't ask for cure. But Jesus was so generous that he gave him all these things. And the only thing you see him do is to pick up his bed and pick up his mat and go home. We need people around us who can carry us to the Lord when we ourselves are paralyzed, moribund, or just faith is so weak in itself. And there are people around us. We can trust our faith community because they have faith and because they have love. And they will carry no matter what the crowd may be in front of them. God bless you all and thank you for those who carry us to the Lord day in and day out. Join me now as we pray together. <clears throat> For all Christians and all people sharing the work of building up the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. For those who work publicly and privately to end unjust, structure, un <coughs> unjust structures that oppress the poor and the powerless, we pray to the Lord. For those who feel excluded or unwelcome in our communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord For our faith community of TV, uh, people who watch TV on a regular basis following our daily mass for their intentions, for their care, and a special blessings in the year 2018, we pray to the Lord. Lord in thanksgiving for Marguerite Bourgeois and for the congregation of Notre Dame and for the work they do with children and with natives, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts you have given us and we ask you to walk with us in the year 2018 that we may be messengers of the good news through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Yes, God. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O oh Lord, our homage and our praise on the memorial of Saint Marguerite, and by these, this spotless and perfect sacrifice, set our hearts in flame with love in your presence. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, 
to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to the experience of this earth, the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we sing. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Marguerite, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Nourished, by the full, nourished to the full by the sacrament of salvation, we implore your favor, O Lord, that by practicing charity after the example of Saint Marguerite, we may come to share with her in your glory. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray for the men who are making the retreat this evening under me, and the Holy Spirit, obviously. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants.